Due to mature subject matter, parental discretion is advised. Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by a sex coach to the stars, author and friend of the program. She sold more than 2 million copies of the book, 101 Nights of Great Sex. And her appearance today, sadly, will be the last for this book. We welcome author of a great Valentine's Day present, our friend, Laura Korn. Wow, what an intro. <laughs> I don't want to quit. I don't want to, I don't want to hang it up. <laughs> Laura, let's go beyond the mic. Love is complicated, but after 30 years of perfecting your craft, you have the perfect gift for Valentine's Day. Why is 101 Nights of Great Sex perfect for the ones you love? Wow, that's a great question. You know, here's what I love about giving your partner a book as a gift. Here's the bottom line. Every time you read a book, you get smarter. Yep. Just a fact. Would you agree? Definitely. And consider this. Most men, 90%, I would say, have never read a book on sex. (laughs) But when they do, and a woman knows you're reading a book on sex, there's nothing hotter. The only thing that would be equivalent would be giving her jewelry. And if you can give her jewelry and a book on sex, and by the way, one of the envelopes in the book, I don't know if I've ever discuss this with you. This is a book that you don't read. It's a book you do. Now, this book is to be used, uh, so, not read. You got to do the you book. Get to do the book, and it forces you out of your emotional comfort zone. <laughs> totally. So, it's, there's like 101 sealed envelopes in the book. Imagine. It's super cool. Yep. Um, and there are 50 for him, for his eyes only, 50 for her eyes only. So, when you want to add that spice, you both rip out an envelope. So, you kind of flip through the book, and all the titles are really it's very intriguing, very mysterious, very hot, like number one, Honey Lingus, for his eyes only. Or 23, Bad to the Boner, his eyes only. Or 41, 35. Yes, if you've got five <laughs> minutes, you can you can turn her on. <laughs> I mean, really, if I show you a way to take five minutes, make it the Super Bowl. Like, and you know what? And that... Would you not say that Valentine's Day is the Super Bowl for women? And if you mess this up, you're going to be in the super dog house. <laughs> and I'm here to make sure you're not. So my first tip, so what I'm going to say about the book, when you buy this book on sex, and look, there's like 1,400 five-star reviews on Amazon. Half of them are from men. Men have never bought a book. And the kind of reviews are like, I've never seen my wife this happy. She doesn't stop smiling. It's that kind of thing because you're giving this book as a gift to women who are the big buyers of books. And you're saying to a woman, I want to be a better lover. I want to learn more. Now, Laura, guys are closed off emotionally, mentally, physically sometimes. But once you experience this in your life, you'll never be the same. You know, I'm so glad you said that because I have made, I have built a career on one word. And I'm the only author that talks about it. I'm the only one that executes it. And and it's a curious thing to me. There are some people out there, Sean, that are trying to copy me now. And I, I think it's the highest form of flattery. This word is so important. And the word is anticipation. You know, the number one sexual complaint of couples is like they, they fall into a rut. On Reddit, which, which I read the thread, the DB, you don't want to fall into the dead bedroom situation. And the way you do that is you build anticipation and you rip out these sealed envelopes and you set a plan and you surprise your partner. It's so simple. Men are idiots when it comes to the ones we love. We think we know what you want, but what do women want in 2023 after being stuck at home during the pandemic and you're looking at each other and going, oh, you're still here. No. <laughs> They want well. I think it's something that we all want. I think it's 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 adventure. It's novelty. I mean, it's not a big mystery. The key to having long term passion, you know, it, it seems like kind of like that's not happening. We're so distracted. We've got dogs. We've got jobs. We've got kids. We've got the internet. You know, distraction, distraction, distraction. And what what I think everyone is looking for is that magic tool that's going to change that. And it's and you don't have to do it all the time, but I think it's a scientific fact actually that novelty, doing new things, is what keeps relationships passionate. 
you need a little passion. Women are looking for new adventures, but I'm gonna, and this is true for Valentine's Day. Women are always looking for the creativity behind the gesture. Now, anyone can give the flowers candy. It's not creative or fun anymore. Right. A, a perfect example. A couple, you know, he comes home every Friday night, stops at the grocery store, does something like that, and he brings her flowers. I'm going to give you a perfect example, right? Flowers. And every Friday. So she expects it. Walks in the door, gives her flowers. And how you flip that is you come home Friday night and you ring the doorbell. And you hand her the flowers. Same gesture, but it's the creativity behind the gesture. Same thing true. Every man should buy a card, a Valentine's Day card. You're in the doghouse if you don't. I'm sorry. Women are sentimental. They want the card. And they want something heartfelt on the card. My wife would be happy if we would just go get half price candy the day oh. after Valentine's Day. But you know what? I, I've got to be, Sean, when a woman says, I don't want you to. It's true. I think women can be full of it. I think women, I think that they want you to surprise them. And they are throwing these curveballs because they've either been disappointed, I'm sorry, or or they don't want to make you feel pressured and all of these other things, right? Because they've been set up, so many guys, and I bless their, bless their hearts. They just, it's very hard. We are not taught this in school. How to be creative. No, among other things. But <laughs> <laughs> I think women are sentimental, most of them. And I think if you get a Valentine's Day card and you mail it, like get it right now and write a heartfelt note and put it in the mail to her. Don't open, you know, if you bring in the mail, leave it there. It, it, it just, it's a, such a simple move. But the creativity behind it is so heartfelt. It's just women will melt. And when a woman when a woman's heart melts, her legs follow. End of story. Okay, I like that. I like giving this book. I, I'm all here to get those legs open. All right, heartfelt. Author of 101 Nights of Great Sex, Laura Korn joins us beyond the mic for The Rocky Nate. It's just eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. Laura, there is no pressure. <laughs> okay, nice. Go. What tragic love story do you relate to? Ooh, love story. Who are you mentoring for the future? Honestly, I really hope anyone that buys my book. Nice. Especially especially women, because women, they want to seduce their partner. They need permission. And I think 101 Nights of Great Sex, when they rip out the envelopes, that's what I hear the most. They're like, oh my God, I ripped out the velvet tongue. And I can't believe I seduced my husband with velvet tongue. Wow. I feel empowered. Next question. What's the biggest blooper you've never lived down? Oh, my second appearance on The View. What happened? Oh, my God. I sucked. I sucked so bad. I became, I had panic attack. And I froze on national TV. Oh, no. Yep. The first appearance when Barbara Walters interviewed me, it was amazing. I killed it. Then they invited me back. And then I froze. And I was, it's okay. It's okay. It, it just happened. You asked, I answered. Laura, why did you choose sex coach as a profession? Well, a lot of celebrities contacted me and loved the book. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow being a fan and Britney Spears and a bunch of other people that I thought, well, that's kind of cool. God, you know, to think that these, everyone needs help in the bedroom. It, it doesn't matter who you are. The approach is so fun and playful, ripping the pages out. I just, and that celebrities liked it. I just kind of thought it had a nice ring. What board game describes your love life now? Oh, ooh, what board game? My goodness. Life, Monopoly. Sorry. <laughs> Not sorry, because there's no words. There's no sorry in my household. Um, there's only laughter. Uh, <laughs> um, although I did do something in Amsterdam. Um, now we're going to anyway, get to that in a second. Um, no, Hold on. <laughs> um, it was fun. Well, oh, okay. I, I'm going to say backgammon, because I like one-on-one. Yeah, I just like 
that one-on-one competition. And I, I like rolling the dice. Next. Place you love to visit on vacation. Amsterdam. Now we're going to get to that in a second. Let's finish the Rocky and A. We'll get to that uh, in a second. When you are in a relationship, do you believe in separate or joint bank accounts? Separate. Laura, who would you like to have one more special moment with? Oh, that's so wonderful. Um, Oh, my brother who just died. A big hug with my brother. I loved him. If you're enjoying these conversations, please check out another Beyond the Mic episode to find more actors, artists, and people you need to know. We'd also appreciate a like and subscribe on the Good Pods app. It's time for the back half with author of 101 Nights of Great Sex, Laura Korn, Beyond the Mic. Laura, I heard you were to Amsterdam last year. I got to know. What happened? <laughs> well, let's just say uh, the red light district will never be the same. Ooh, la, la. <laughs> you know what? I'm not, Well, you know, I, I was a social experiment, right? My partner took me there for my birthday. And as a social experiment, I spent some time in the red light district. And I learned a lot. And then I asked Charlie, I said, can I? talk about this on the radio because I can't talk about it without, you know, exposing, <laughs> exposing, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, penetrating. No, oh, Lord, Lord. Lord. Um, no, I didn't say that. Anyway, it was a real eye, eye opener. I got to meet a lot of the girls. They're very playful. It's not what I thought. I thought it was going to be seedy. And I guess you could, some people could view it that way, but I didn't. And it was amazing. Why was doing that important for you? Truth, and I'm going to be truth with you because I love you. I thought I was a jealous girl. I had been, had problems with jealousy in the past. And I thought that was what was going to happen. Did not happen. Zero. Laura, now that you're not going to be publicizing 101 Nights of Great Sex anymore, this is the end of a chapter of your life. Mm -hmm. What's in your future? (laughs) Well, unless you're hanging around in Marina Del Rey on a beach, I am looking at businesses, truth, where I can be on a beach in a bikini or in, in a desert. You can see me in a bikini on my Instagram account or my Facebook account. Please check it out. And that tells you where I want to be on a daily basis. I love the sun. I love to be in dancing in a bikini. And (laughs) that's the truth. (laughs) Have you seen me dancing in a bikini? Your Instagram is famous. Awesome. Okay. Well, it's, I mean, no, not, you know, I'm not that social. I don't do a lot of posts, but I try to make it count. And did you see, oh, you didn't see on Facebook. Oh, okay. My boyfriend just, I did a boudoir photography thing, Sean, and I'm in a corset and I also have posted that on Facebook and Charlie took that image and now it's on his back. What? It's on my Facebook, the, the image that he put on his back of me and it's on his entire back and it's me in a corset and it's like, I'm so flattered. I, I, He's getting a lot more massages. <laughs> Where can people find you on social media? Just Laura Corn, author, author Laura Corn on Instagram and Facebook Laura Corn, obviously. The book, 101 Nights of Great Sex on Amazon. Sean, this may be the last time you can buy the book. I am the publisher. I have published over 2 million books. I am thinking that this is going to be the last print run. Um, and so. I'm telling you, if you get this book, you give it as a gift. You'll be calling my name out when you make love. Thank you! Thank you, Laura! (laughs) I'm so glad I got it before you... Seriously. (laughs) Kids are not. How has your life changed from this experience? Oh, I'm such a better partner. I know that always being, you know, having that spark, it's not always easy, but I always use the formula and I'm always planning dates for Charlie. Charlie plans dates for me. And this is just outside the bedroom and sex dates. We do the book together. We're always inventing new things. There's nothing taboo. And we do, you know, we believe in monogamy. We're not like swingers or 
I, I think writing the book has helped me be a better lover. I used to have a low sex drive. I don't anymore. Good thing. Laura, you look like you're happy again with Charlie. Oh, uh, are you happy, Sean? I'm always happy. Oh, uh, and what's the key? Which, what's the key for you? The key was finding my wife who believes in me. She's my biggest supporter, fighter for me. Once you find that, everything else is gravy. Woo. Now you saved the best for last. What are your three best tips other than get the book for <laughs> Valentine's Day? For Valentine's Day is, you know, women are looking for, and, and, and men shouldn't just do all the work. Women need to also bring it too for Valentine's Day. I really love, you know, the book. I love giving jewelry. I think women are sentimental and Amazon has great necklaces and bracelets. And if you can give her that piece of joy while you're having sex, it, it's like off the charts, right? A Valentine's Day card, like I said, put it through the mail. Just think of something you've never done before. Creativity. Overall, the tips for great sex. Hygiene. <laughs> Good hygiene is critical. Sean, you wouldn't believe how many relationships fail because it's something, you know, just fizzle because people stop, you know, caring. It's amazing. It's huge. All right. Nobody talks about it. Fresh breath, clean tea, shampoo, hair. It's the uniform that you put on before the game of love. Okay. Second tip, lube on the nightstand. Not under the bed, on the nightstand. It's a must. Everything feels good with lube. All right? Now, if you're going to go downtown, you, lube, you want to wait and put the lube on later. Not Because that's kind of gross. But lube, <laughs> lube, lube. And that involves toys, fingers, anything. It Everything feels better. On the nightstand. Even if you have kids, you have to put it in a bottle. It, it doesn't say lube. It's got to be there. Big tip. All right, remember, men are like frying pans. They come on quick. They sizzle fast. Women are like oven, slow going. Women need at least 10 minutes of foreplay. Kissing, playing, you know, and that means not touching that the girl down there. Another tip, silence is not golden in bed. Women are auditory. Talk to her, moan. And remember, the magic formula, anticipation plus creativity equals great sex. Oh, and commu and communication, of course, but great communication. And when you communicate, the things I just said naturally take place. And take turns planning dates. Take turns planning dates. It's time for one big question with author of 101 Nights of Great Sex, Laura Korn, me on the mic. Laura, how is Charlie doing after his battle with cancer? And what does his love mean to you? Oh, thank you for asking. He's so much better. He did a test last weekend. We don't have the results, but I'm sure he's going to be good. He's so devoted. And he was kind of shut down when I met him. He's married 34 years in a sexless relationship. He jumped right into, imagine meeting me, you know, six weeks after his separation on, on the Venice boardwalk. And, you know, he was out of practice. He didn't know anything. <laughs> Especially when you're in your bikini. <laughs> but he didn't know. So I had to slowly, you know, teach him. And, and, and he's a guy that was, he'd never read a sex book, didn't know anything. You know what I mean? And he just went, you know, and now he's like an expert. He, so, as a man, you have to be open to learning new things. I really think that's true, you know, and don't be so shut down. And a book, what, you know, try something new. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be afraid she's going to shut you down. She's going to be thrilled, especially if you get her up against the wall. Pull her hair. Be an animal. Toss her on the bed. Be forceful. Action equals attraction. There she goes again. Guys, well, Laura, where can people find your book? <laughs> okay, Amazon. Go to Amazon. Backgammon is the story of her love life. She loves Amsterdam and hopes to mentor every woman 
for sex. Author of 101 Nights of Great Sex, Laura Korn, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. God, I love you. I love you. Oh, you're the best. Thank you, my friend. And that, my friends, is Beyond the Mic. Thank you.